What's up guys, Houndish here, and today we're jumping back in with the weekly reset breakdown for Destiny 2, starting on July 12th. And this week we have the return of the Iron Banner for the second time in the season, so we'll cover what you need to know there. Plus, we have another pretty good week for the Eververse store. And then we get new season challenges as always with a reset on the core season 17 content, as well as the end game rotation, plus We'll touch on the key activities and rewards in the game for this week. So I hope you guys find the video useful as always. And also be sure to check out our partner at Gamersubs, the leading provider of gaming energy with tasty sugar-free drinks, which improve focus. And the link for that is down below. Be sure to use code Houndish at checkout. And now though, as we get into the game for the week, initially for Crucible, Shax will bring Team Scorched back to the playlist. And we have the return of Iron Banner for the second and final time this season. So if you're working on the new title for Iron Banner, this is the final opportunity to get that unlocked before we go into Season 18. And otherwise, weapons and armor will be available as always. And we'll see the return of Iron Banner Rift. So let us know if you plan to jump into that again this week. And otherwise, bonus Crucible ranks will be active for the duration of the week. Next up though is the reset on our seasonal content and also the containment and sever mission rotate but otherwise for now the bound in sorrow quest is completed so as far as we know we don't anticipate any story quests or so on this week but we do get new weekly challenges so initially we have shocking forgiveness to complete sever forgiveness using only an arc subclass as well as arc kinetic or stasis weapons bear in mind once again that can be affected by making kills with things like scythes or explosions which will count as solar, so worth bearing that in mind, but otherwise we have Vestiges of Dread 3, and throughout the season of The Haunted, collect Vestiges of Dread and pick up material nodes in Derelict Leviathan. There's Umbral Focus in 3 to focus equipment at Crown of Sorrow throughout the season, and then Pinnacle to reach power level 1570. And the final couple of challenges are Wide Point Calibration to calibrate trace rifles and shotguns with bonus progress for rapidly defeating targets and defeating guardians. And finally Gambit Ornament to acquire the Gambit Ornament for Chain of Command. And then that takes us to the Vanguard, and the featured Nightfall for the week will be the Insight Terminus, and of course we have the chance to earn the Nightfall weapon, which should be DFA, according to Braytech. Then for the Raid and Dungeon Rotation, Vault of Glass will be the featured Raid, and so all of its challenges and rewards should be available, with the featured Dungeon this week being the Grasp of Avarice, so these will drop their unique items. Plus we have the refresh on the new Duality Dungeon as well. And for a quick breakdown of Lost Sectors for the week, for Tuesday's reset, 12th of July, Metamorphosis will be featured dropping exotic helmets. For the 13th of July, we'll see the Sepulchre Lost Sector dropping exotic boots. Then 14th of July will be Extraction dropping exotic gauntlets. July 15th, we'll see the Excavation Site Lost Sector dropping exotic chests. July 16th will be Skydock dropping exotic helmets. And then we have the Quarry on July 17th dropping exotic legs. And finally, K1 Crew Quarters on July 18th dropping exotic arms. And now that takes us to the Eververse store for the week. A few good items this week, and initially we have the Swift Persistence exotic ship available for 2000 Bright Dust, as well as the Fortunate Beast, a hunter ornament right there for Lucky Pants, which will be 1500 Bright Dust. For Titans, we'll see the Piezo Electric Stratagem ornament right there for no backup plans, which is 1500 Bright Dust. And for the same price, we'll see the Replicate Exploit ornament for the Necrotic Grips for Warlocks. Additionally, though, we'll have the No Entry Projection for 1500 bright dust as well as the aposmatism shader which as always will be 300 bright dust then we'll see the flaming hula hoop exotic emote for 3250 bright dust as well as the showstopper dance legendary emote for 700 Exotic Ghost Shell right here is the Long Haul Shell for 2850 Bright Dust. And the Exotic Weapon Ornament for the week will be the Electromagnetic Execution, an ornament for Arbalist right there for 1250 Bright Dust. Then for the Eververse Universal Ornament set this week, we'll see Helmets at 1200 Bright Dust each. And then we have the Defenseless To Be Armed Ornament for the Callus Mini Tool at 700 Bright Dust. And finally, the Eremis Ghost Projection, which is 1500 Bright Dust this week. Our last couple of bits of content right here though, and for Dares of Eternity this week we'll get the Rotation 2 loot drops, and that includes Year 1 Titans Lost Pacific sets, as well as the Braytech suit armor drops, and Season of Arrivals weapons. But if you're after the Ascendant Challenge this week, it will be found in the Keep of Owned Edges via Harbinger's Seclude, so if you want any gameplay of how to get to that one this week, we will run some at the end of the video. But the only other quick mention for today is for a few known issues. The next update that we'll see for Destiny 2 will be next week alongside Solstice of Heroes. And for the moment, Bungie are tracking issues where the Investigator and Gumshoe rare armor sets are incorrectly appearing as available to one 
unlock for armor synthesis. They also say that the arc siphon does not successfully count as an arc mod for activating secondary perks on arc charged with light mods, but also that dialogue for Nessus patrols may not successfully play on patrol activation, and that Raul displays incorrect error messages when players attempt to acquire certain items with a full inventory. And finally, players who haven't picked up their prime gaming items from Amanda Holiday's inventory for several drops can't view her inventory anymore. So those are just a few of the issues, but we'll have to see when they get updated. And as always, I'll keep you posted on the patch that we'll see next week. Otherwise, guys, that's what we have to break down in the reset today. So as always, I hope the video has been useful. And if it has, a rating down below really does help us out on the channel. And additionally, feel free to get subscribed so I can keep you posted with more Destiny content. Of course, next week, we'll finally get the Solstice of Heroes event. So that should be a pretty fun one. I'll keep you posted with any news we may get about that. But otherwise, guys, for today, I appreciate you tuning in and I'll catch you all very soon. Thank you.